Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and in this video we're talking about transformations and in particular rotations. Well, what do you need to know? Well you need to know how to rotate a shape, i.e. perform a rotation on a given shape and you need to also be able to describe a rotation that has happened. In this video we are going to rotate shapes and in a, another video, so a next video, we are going to describe rotations. Okay, so check that out if you want to be able to describe rotations. Both of these are required for GCSE. So let's talk about rotations and transformations. What is a transformation? <laughs> So, um, that video might help you remember what a transformation actually means. Um, uh, you might think of the word or the film Transformers, uh, as that car did in the video. And a transformation means to change or alter your shape in some way. And there are four types of transformations you need to know. So, transformations. And there are four types you need to be able to talk about. Rotations, which we'll talk about in this video. Translations, which we'll talk about in another video. Reflections, again we'll make another video on that. And lastly, enlargements. So you need to be able to uh, perform each of these and describe each of these. And we're talking about rotations in this video. So what's a rotation? Well, a rotation is when you turn a shape And there are three pieces of information you need to be able to turn a shape appropriately. The first one, you need to know how much to turn it, so you need uh, an angle. For example, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, etc. The second thing you need is a direction. And that is usually talked about in terms of being clockwise, so 90 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise. And the last thing you need is a center of rotation. So center of rotation. And that's the point around which you turn your object. And you'll see in the examples what exactly that means. So you need these three pieces of information to do a rotation properly. So let's do some examples. Here's example one. We're asked to rotate shape C by 90 degrees clockwise about the origin 00. zero. So we're told we have a rotation. We're told we want to go 90 degrees, we're told we want to go clockwise, and the center of rotation is the origin zero, zero. Okay, so let's perform this rotation. Our tracing paper out, there we go, and we're gonna put our tracing paper over our shape as follows, right? And what we're going to do is trace out uh, our shape. So let's trace out the shape we want to rotate. So let's get a different color pen for this here. So there we go, like that. Okay, so we've traced out our shape on top of our tracing paper. Now the key thing is to make sure you uh, mark the center of rotation, which is here, zero, zero. And what we're going to do is we're gonna put our pen exactly on that point there in order that our center of rotation uh, stays exactly where it is and doesn't move when we perform the rotation. So, let's actually do that rotation now. So, we're going to go clockwise, so we're going to go in that direction, not that direction which would be anti-clockwise, so we're going to go clockwise 90 degrees, i.e. until where this top edge here is exactly facing uh, vertically down, not horizontally across anymore. So, let's perform that rotation. And there we go, we've done that rotation. So that's where our new shape would be. And what we're going to do is we we'll peel off the tracing paper and mark the corners. So mark the vertices of that triangle as follows. 
And then what we can do is we can take away our tracing paper totally and actually fill in our shape. So our shape would look like this when we filled it in. And there we go, we're totally done. You need to know two words. The original shape is called the object and the shape after the rotation is called the image. And that's us having performed a simple rotation 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. Right, let's have a go at another example, example two. Example two, rotate shape C by 180 degrees about the origin. First thing to note is we have an angle of rotation and we've got a centre of rotation. We don't have a direction, we're not told clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'll show you in a second why we don't need it in this case. So get your tracing paper out and put your tracing paper over the shape as follows. Now we're going to trace out the shape. So we're going to trace out the shape with a different colour um, pen. So draw in the edges perfectly, like that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to mark the centre of rotation. The centre of rotation is the origin, so we're going to put our pen on the origin and we're going to hold it down. And now we're going to perform that rotation. So. Let's do that. So we're going 180 degrees about the origin. Now watch what happens. If I go anti-clockwise, let's see where I end up. That's 90 degrees, by the way. That would be 180. That's where I end up. Let's go the other way. 90 degrees, 180. You end up in exactly the same point. So it doesn't matter whether you went clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay? It does not matter. You will always end up in the same place. So. That's where we end up. We peel back our tracing paper to mark the corners, mark the four vertices of that rectangle as follows, delete the tracing paper, and then we just make sure we draw in the shape. And we are done then, just like that. And what we need to do is just remember the words. Remember this is called the object. The original shape is called the object and the final shape is called the image. Sometimes you will be asked or uh, spoken to about those words in the exam. So we've done another example now. Let's try another one. Here's another example, example three. Rotate shape C by 180 degrees about one two. Now, we're told here uh, a direction, 180. We're told the center. And we're not told, uh, we're told how much, sorry, 180, and we're told the centre. We're not told whether it's anti-clockwise or clockwise because we know 180 degrees, it doesn't matter for which. So we get our tracing paper out as follows. We put our tracing paper over the shape. And we're going to trace that shape. So let's trace that shape out as follows, carefully. Like that there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make sure we mark in our centre of enlargement. Now this time it's one, two, one across, two up. Here's our centre of enlargement, so it's not the origin this time. And we're going to put our pen on there just so we hold that point down perfectly. Right, now what we're going to do is actually perform the rotation. So we're going to go 180 degrees, it doesn't matter whether we go that way or that way. So there's 90 degrees there and 180 degrees will be there. Let's just check we end up in the same point if we go the other way. So 90 degrees would be there and 180 degrees would be there and we do end up in the same place. So what we're going to do is mark off the edges. So the edge was there, there, and there and we're going to delete our tracing paper and then we're going to fill in the shape as follows. Okay, and there we go, we've performed that rotation. Remember this, ob this is called the object here and this new one is called the image. Okay, so we're done. Now what I'd like to do at this point is just to show you 
a few things students do incorrectly so you can make sure you don't do those and finally we'll end with a couple of exam questions. So I'm going to show you a couple of classic mistakes. Okay, so here's classic mistake number one. We're asked to rotate shape C by 90 degrees anti-clockwise about negative 2, 1. Get your tracing paper out and put it over. I'm going to perform this and show you what students do. Students incorrectly think that you always have to twist around one of the corners of the shapes. So they would draw this shape in here as follows. So they would draw their shape like that. But then what they would do is that they would hold their pen down on the corner of the shape like that. They would twist this around uh, and they would go 90 degrees anti-clockwise so there and that's where they would put their shape. Now that is not the center of enlargement. The center of enlargement was negative 2, 1. It was not the corner. Do not think it has to be the corner of the shape you hold down. Sometimes it might be. Sometimes it isn't. It is this point here is your center of sorry, rotation and not necessarily the corner, so don't just fall for that. Let's have a look at another classic mistake. Mistake two, the exact same question, get your tracing paper out, and what students do is students assume the center has to be, uh, of rotation has to be the origin, because they're so used to doing that that they assume it is always that. It is not always that. In this question, we are told it's the point negative 2, 1. But students go ahead and they perform the rotation around the center, so anti clockwise 90 degrees there. It is not there this time, the center of rotation is negative 2, 1, and it's not 0, 0. So don't just assume it's the origin. Be careful to read the question. Let's have a look at another classic mistake. Mistake uh, number 3. So um, I'm going to get my tracing paper out. I'm going to put it over my sh shape. And this time, I'm actually going to mark the correct center of enlargement, negative 2, uh, sorry, center of rotation, negative 2, 1. I'm going to put my pen on that point. Uh, firstly, obviously, I had to trace the point, so I would have traced, sorry, my object shape. Everything's looking pretty good at this point. It looks like I'm going to get the question right. Until I do something silly, and instead of rotating anti-clockwise and reading the question, I just go clockwise because I'm so used to going clockwise. And that is another classic mistake students do. They just always go clockwise and don't read the question. It was anti-clockwise and I should have actually gone to that point there. And I would have drawn that in and that actually is the correct answer to this question. Right, so I've shown you how to do these. I've shown you the classic mistakes to avoid. Let's have a go at a couple of exam questions and see if you can do them. Typical exam question. So we're asked to rotate triangle A 90 degrees clockwise about the center O. You can print this out, have a go. I'll go through it in five seconds. What you do is you get your tracing paper out and you put it over your shape as follows. Um, you trace out your shape as we've done previously, so let's trace this shape out. There we go. And then we're going to mark out the centre. The centre is the origin here. And we're going to put our pen over that to hold down that centre. And then we're going to actually perform the rotation. So we're going to
we're going to go 90 degrees clockwise about the center. So 90 degrees would be like that, clockwise about the center, and we would peel back our tracing paper, mark the corners, like so. So mark the corners like that, and then what we would do is draw in our shape. So draw in our shape as follows, and there we go, we have performed that rotation. So let's have a go at another uh, question. So here's another question for you. Pause the video, try it, and I'll go through it in five seconds. So we get our tracing paper, we put it over our shape, we trace out our shape, As follows. Then what we do is we um, mark the center. So we, our center is going to be negative one one there. It's already marked on this particular uh, exam question for us. And now we're going to perform the rotation. So we're going to 180 degrees about that point. Remember, it doesn't matter if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So let's go this way. That would be 90 and that would therefore be 180 just there and let's just check it doesn't make a difference if we go the other way that would be 90 and again that would be 180 so we'd mark we'll peel back the tracing paper carefully mark the vertices of that triangle remove our tracing paper and we'd fill this in here now be very careful to read the question the question does ask us here it says label the new triangle A, so you must do that in the exam or you might lose marks. That triangle is triangle A. And that's everything you need to know about performing rotations in a GCSE. Thanks loads for watching. Tune in for another video where I help you uh, work out how to describe rotations that have already happened.